Hey guys, and welcome back. Today's video is a quick update to my previous video where we took a look at various types of battery banks and USB cables for the Switch. In the last video, we determined that any battery bank that has a USB-C output that can push 5 volts at 3 amps is good enough to charge the Switch, even while playing games. While that setup was adequate, it wasn't ideal. To get to that magical 15 volts that the OEM charger can provide, we needed a USB PD compliant battery bank. Thing is, at the time the Switch launched, it was fairly difficult to get a hold of one, but I have one here today. For those of you that aren't familiar with USB PD, USB PD is a quick charging standard similar to Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0, which offers faster charging by increasing the voltage, compared to competing options like OnePlus's Dash Charger, which does it by increasing the current. While the technologies are somewhat similar, they're not compatible with each other. The RAV Power battery bank that I'll be taking a look at today is called the RAV Power 26,800 mAh power bank, and it supports USB PD up to 30 watts. If this battery bank looks a little familiar to you, that's probably because we looked at its smaller capacity Quick Charge 3.0 brother in the last video. My particular bank also came with a USB PD wall wart, but it's no longer included. RAV Power probably decided this was probably for the best because Brenton from Google found out that while this charger does support up to 30 watts, it will negotiate up to 40. Obviously the charger wouldn't be able to provide adequate power at 40 watts, and would brown out, potentially causing damage to the charger and your device. In my case, I'll only use the wall ward to charge a battery bank and my switch, both of which negotiates and draws power well below the 40 watts. So for me, it isn't too big of a problem, so I'll be including the power readings for this as well. First off, we have the wall ward. It was able to pull up to 14.7 volts at 1.06 amps and shows 15 watts at the wall. In my testing, while I did find that the OEM charger had a higher peak of about 14 watts at 1.3 amps, the average power draw was about the same as the RAV Power wall ward. I've been using this charger as my spare and it's been the perfect substitute for the OEM charger. Next, we have what you've been waiting for. Using the RAV Power USB PD battery bank, we can see that it pulled up to 15.5 volts at 1.12 amps, so approximately 17 watts. This is significantly better than the USB-C at 5 volts 3 amps, and on par if not slightly better than the wall ward. Now there is one particularly annoying caveat. To get the charging started with the battery bank, the switch must be put to sleep for the USB PD to negotiate. If I plug in the connector in while the screen is on, I would see the power draw of 15.6 volts at 0.48 amps, but the charging icon would not show up, doing the same thing while the switch is asleep and the USB PD would properly negotiate and start charging at 15.5 volts at 1.12 amps and display the charging icon at the top right. The wall ward had some weird behavior as well. While it could charge regardless of whether the switch was asleep or not, if you didn't put the switch to sleep first, the maximum power draw you would see would be 14.9 volts at 0.61 amps. With all the technical details out of the way, the question is, should you get this battery bank? And I personally think it depends. If you already have a battery bank with USB-C connector that outputs at 5 volts at 3 amps and you don't necessarily care for fast charging, I would say hang tight until there's a game that can pull more than the 15 volts at 3 amps. I personally use a quick charge battery bank without USB PD more often since keeping my quick charge capable Samsung S7 Edge alive is a higher priority than my Switch when I'm out. And to be honest, it works perfectly fine. Up to this point, I haven't found myself absolutely needing USB PD, and I definitely haven't felt the need to carry one bank for my phone and the other for my Switch, but that's totally an option for extended trips. However, if you have a phone that also supports USB PD, like for example the Google Pixel, or you're looking for a dedicated bank just for the Switch, the answer becomes a lot easier. It's a no-brainer. Get it and don't look back. At the time of this recording, the battery bank is going for $74.99 USD, but RAV Power runs deals pretty often that brings the price down significantly, so do keep your eyes out for those. That's it for the Nintendo Switch and USB PD update. If you like what I do, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.